선생님 반갑습니다. 사실 이전에 알리타 배틀엔젤 제 감독님을 아 네, 화상을 통해서 인터뷰를 하신 적이 있는데 그때 정말 열정적으로 너무 많은 얘기해 주셔서 오늘 큰 기대가 있습니다. Well, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. <웃음> But uh, hopefully we'll make another Alita film. I've, I've been talking to Robert Rodriguez. I haven't talked to Disney yet because they own it now. 음. But uh, I'd like to make another one. I, I like that film. 네, 아바타 이 물의 길이라는 엄청난 그런 영화들을 가지고 이제 감독님이 오신 건데요. 한국의 이런 귀한 시간에 사실은 찾아와서 한국 팬들을 만나게 되셨는데 또이 채널을 보시는 분들을 위해서 한마디 이렇게 또 소감 말씀해 주시겠습니까? So I would like to just uh, greet the fans of Avatar here in Korea and say uh, I really hope you enjoy the movie. Hopefully it delivers all the beauty and the action and adventure of the first film and maybe even a little more heart and emotion beyond what the first film did plus underwater stuff. 어, 감독님은 사실 한때 속편의 제왕이라는 말로 불릴 정도로 정말 속편 작업이 쉽지 않은데도 불구하고 속편을 만드시면서 거대한 성과들을 거두셨습니다. 이번 작품은 아바타의 속편이라는 면에서 그 어느 속편보다 더 기대가 되는 상황인데요. 이전에 감독님 만드셨던 아바타의 첫 번째 작품에 비해서 어떤 점을 주로 계승을 하셨고 또 어떤 점에 대해서는 새롭게 변조하셔서 새로운 것에 주력하셨는지 두 가지 질문을 같이 드리게 됩니다. That's a really good way to look at it. You know, you you keep something because the fans if they like the first film. You've right. got to you've got to respect uh, what the fans want and what they expect from the movie. So, Jake and Nitiri are back, uh, and you'll remember Sigourney Weaver was in the first film, but her character died. But I found a way to bring her back <laughs> in a completely right. different mm -hmm. character. And Stephen Lang was just such a great mm -hmm. villain, and I really enjoyed working with him. So I figured out a way to bring him back. But then obviously, what's new is we take the whole show on the road and we go to the uh, we go to the ocean and now we're meeting a new culture there and we're having to learn our, our family are having to learn how to adapt to ocean life which Neytiri has never experienced plus they have kids and then the kids connect with the kids in the in the new the new culture and the whole story kind of shifts to the story of these young people that are in their in their teens and kind of follows them for a while so there's a lot of new stuff and it goes in a lot of probably unexpected directions. 감독님은 사실 수많은 어떤 다양한 세계들을 창조하시면서 관객들을 사로잡아 왔지만 그 중에서도 특히 물과 관련될 때 정말 어, 경이로운 영화들을 만드셨습니다. 어비스 같은 영화도 그랬었고 타이타닉 같은 영화를 통해서도 어, 감독님에게 물은 정말 최고의 플레이그라운드가 아닌가라는 생각을 했는데요. 이번에 아바타 2가 바로 제목이 부재로도 물의 길이라는 제목이 들어가 있고 실제로 해양 환경이 너무 중요합니다. 그런 측면에서 생각한다면 감독님 입장에선 정말 짜릿한 그런 영화를 만드는 어, 설정이 아닌가 싶은데 이런 물의 세계로 돌아오신 것에 대해서 감독님의 소감을 듣고 싶고요. 또한 가지는 이렇게 물 속에 등장하는 다양한 뭐라고 그럴까 해양 생물들 이런 것들은 또 어떻게 창조하시게 된 건지 추가 질문 드립니다. Okay, so obviously I love movie making, storytelling, and I love the ocean for real in terms of research and exploration and diving. And I've done some water movies, The Abyss and and uh, Titanic, as you mentioned, and I've done six or seven documentary films about the ocean, about shipwrecks, and about uh, hydrothermal vents you know, deep sea life. So I love all the creatures in the ocean. It's such an astonishing place. It's it's like an alien world, oh. right here on Earth, mm -hmm. right? That you could go to and you can experience something extraordinary. So I wanted to express all that in this movie. So I put together the, th the three things that are important to me, movie making, family, mm -hmm. and the ocean. Oh. And just put it all in a blender, and that's what you get. <laughs> what you get is the way of water. Right? So, you know, dealing with a lot of themes about ocean conservation and, and uh, us having to be guardians of the ocean, which we're not, I mean, the, the great we all around the globe, we're not very good guardians of the ocean right now. And a lot of species are going extinct and the coral reefs may be dying out because of temperature and, you know, atmospheric carbon and so on. So, you know, but the movie's not, you know, a lecture, it's, a, it's an adventure. And then I, I love creature design, mm -hmm. obviously, you know. So I got to work with top creature designers again, uh, the people at Legacy Effects, and we had our own, you know, in-house designers. And I love to draw some of the creatures myself. So it was a lot of fun. Our main creatures are the skim wing, which is the kind of the warrior mm -hmm. creature, this guy right here. Mm -hmm. And then we have the elu, which is the long neck creature that's more, uh, you know, kind of more like a horse. It's just like more of an everyday kind of uh, creature to ride at lower speed because he can't come up out of the water and fly like the like the skimwings can. 
And then there's the uh, the tulkun, you know, which are the intelligent, beautiful creatures that are very much like whales. We call them the armored whales, right? You know, we've got all the other thousands of creatures are around the the reef, you know, which are lots of fun. In addition to some of our creatures from the from the first movie, especially the the Akran, you know, the flying creatures. So it was great to uh, bring back to life some of the ones we had from the first movie to create all these new ones and. Probably one of the biggest challenges is what do they look like when they're moving? How do they swim? Mm. How do we create, you know, a plausible kind of swim cycle for these animals? And I even uh, challenged the animators to say, okay, maybe they don't always swim the same way. Sometimes they swim like this, and sometimes they swim like that. And you can see that the, the elu have a very complex. They have a lot of different types of movement in their in their vocabulary, which also made it kind of fun. Panora,我们看到的是一片都市，所以我们不会给你看到，我们看到的是一片都市，所以我们看到的是一片都市，所以我们看到的是一片都市，所以我们看到的是一片都市，所以我们看到的是一片都市，所以我们看到的是一片都
그와 관련해서 프로덕션에서 굉장히 놀라운 것은 13년 만에 나오는 속편임에도 불구하고 이전에 참여했던 모든 배우들이 다 그대로 등장한다는 것이 굉장히 놀랍습니다. 특히 이제 영화를 보면서 가장 놀라웠던 것은 시건이 위버가 시건이 위버의 딸 역할을 한다는 것인데요. 그런 측면에서 이 배우들이 다 그대로 다 참여하시게 된 그런 현장은 어떤 경험이었는지 감독님께 특히 그 시건이 위버를 보면서 많은 관객들이 그 연기나 이런 퍼포먼스 캡처에 대해서 많은 부분들이 놀랄 것 같은데 그 부분에 대한 감독님이 어떤 이야기를 듣고 싶습니다. Well, uh, she basically plays her own daughter, mm -hmm. you know, right. so, it, mm -hmm. so it makes sense. But it was a challenge for Sigourney because she's playing a character who's only one quarter of her actual biological age. But Sigourney was able to go back into her own childhood, her own awkward mm -hmm. teenage years. She spent time, you know, workshopping with, uh, with young girls of that age group and kind of studying their mm -hmm. mannerisms and how they spoke mm -hmm. and so on. So she really... Research the character. In terms of the physical capture, if it was just normal, a normal scene that, that she could do herself, uh, it was fine. If it was something that required some agility, because Kiri's quite young and she's quite agile, she can climb fast and things that Sigourney couldn't do. We had a, a, a body performance double, and Sigourney worked very, very closely with, uh, with her double, whose name was Alicia, and they were close friends. And I told Sigourney, you, direct Alicia. <laughs> I'm not going to direct Alicia. Uh -huh. I want you to do it. You tell her how you want Kiri to be for the things that you can't do yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, Sig did most of it herself, and she did all of her underwater scenes herself and, and all that. So, you know, but, but for the few things that, I mean, Sigourney can't be 15 mm -hmm. years old and jump around and climb mm -hmm. trees, you know. So uh, we had Alicia do the, those scenes. But, but I gave Sigourney the power to control okay. how the physicality of her character as well. And I think that meant a lot to her. She, she also said, I'm not going to do a special voice. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm just going to let Kiri come out. Mm -hmm. Just come out, whatever, however she is, she, that's what she'll be. And then she did a voice. Oh. She didn't realize she was doing a voice, but mm -hmm. everything got lighter. Mm -hmm. Her body got lighter. The way she moved got lighter. Her voice went up mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, because Kiri is a very joyful character. She's also a very sad and anxious character, mm -hmm. concerned about her own place in the world, and so on. And I thought Sigourney brought such beautiful range to the character, her joyful connection to nature, but her sadness and her anxiety around, around people and fitting in and being different. 어, 영화에서 제가 가장 감동받은 부분 중에 하나는 영화 속에 등장하는 이제 툴쿤 중에서 파약한의 시점에서 주인공인 로아크를 보는 그 시점 쇼트가 저한테 굉장히 감동적이었습니다. 어떻게 생각하면 판도라에 있는 모든 생물들이 서로 연결이 되고 서로 소통하는 것을 영화 미학적인 방식으로 가장 멋지게 보여주신 부분이 아닌가 해서 굉장히 큰 감동을 받았는데요. 그렇게 크리처의 입장에서 로아크를 보는 시점 쇼트를 넣은 것에 대한 감독님의 어떤 의도를 듣고 싶습니다. It's just one of those things that occurred to me when we were playing around with the virtual camera. Let's see what it looks like from Pycott's perspective. Make him a real character. You know, not just an animal, but a an intelligent, emotional character in the in the story. And how does he see Loak? What mm -hmm. does he see? He can't hear him very well. So Loak's signing is very important because Pyakon's vocalizations are brrr, you know, really <laughs> deep and high-pitched whistles mm -hmm. and things that Loak can't do. So Loak has to use mm -hmm. has to use the sign language. And I thought how interesting to look at what what would a whale see? So the first thing you do when you create an underwater camera is you put in an orange mm -hmm. filter so that underwater mm -hmm it brings all the colors out. So I thought, all right, when Pyakon's above water, he's going to see everything kind of red shifted or orange shifted. And we used a super, super wide lens so that it, you know, uh, it, it looked distorted and even distorted chromatically at the, at the edges. And you know instantly what you're looking at. It's Pyakon, it's what he sees. You know, I, I think it creates a, a connection to the character, right? And so many people have told me, Pyakon has a soul. Pyakon's a real, a real person. I think that's one of the things that I'm secretly most mm -hmm. proud of about the movie is that we brought this creature to life that people really care about mm -hmm. and they can, they can relate to him. You know, he's got problems. He's been traumatized. He's got a, he's got a past. You know how he's feeling.
어, 사실은 1편은 어떻게 보면 멜라 영화적인 코드가 이야기 속에 담겨 있다고 봅니다. 그런데 이번 영화에서는 사실은 가족 영화적인 코드가 굉장히 강하다고 느껴지고 또 10대 성장 드라마적인 코드가 강하다고 느껴집니다. 사실은 1편에서 소개받았던 우리의 두 주인공인 제이크와 네이트리의 이야기를 1편에서 보았는데 2편에서는 그들의 이야기도 이어지긴 하지만 그 차세대 이야기를 중심으로 해서 굉장히 새로운 이야기를 펼치셨습니다. 이런 식으로 이야기에서 완전히 다른 쪽으로 어, 그 이전의 이야기를 계승하면서도 음. 또 다른 주인공들을 개발하시고 그들에게 포커스를 이 편에서 맞춘 것에 대해서 감독님의 계획을 좀 듣고 싶습니다. Well, it's not about handing off the baton 음. to the young people. It's about seeing the entire family going forward 아, through all 오케이. of the crises, through the war with the, the RDA, you know, the, the humans that are trying to crush out 음. the Navi and, and colonize the planet. So, um, It's always the story of Jake and Neytiri. It's always the story mm. of Loak mm. and you know the the Reef Kids and uh, Kiri. Kiri becomes a very important character going forward. So all of the characters are set in motion by this movie, and it continues right through three, through four, and through five. But there are a lot of changes to all of these characters mm. in, in ways that I don't want to go into. Mm. But I I like to think we've got. Mm -hmm. a lot of things that people won't expect but that they'll feel good about and a lot of challenges that these characters have and how they have to work together and the conflicts between them that threaten to tear the family apart you know it's very dramatic as as it goes forward we you know we promise more beauty more wonder more amazing creatures but we also promise that these characters will go forward Jake Netiri Koric Kiri Loak Payakan Spider. You know, spider, of course, <laughs> mm. absolutely. Spider and Spider becomes a very important character as well because he's kind of the pivot mm. point in between Quaritch and Jake, right? We can't just have Jake constantly and Quaritch constantly just, just fighting mm. as we go along. Their relationship gets much more complicated. I think people like complexity mm. in, in characters, you know, and they like to see how these lives develop over time. So it's, it's not like a superhero. Mm -hmm. story where there's a new villain mm -hmm. with every film. Ah. Same guy. Okay. Right? Same family. Same adversary mm -hmm. through the whole thing. But how he evolves mm -hmm. is also very interesting. Plus we bring in additional adversaries as as we go along. Mm -hmm. Additional adversaries and additional allies. Yeah, 말씀 대단히 감사합니다. 고맙습니다. <laughs> Done already? Thanks a lot. This was a good discussion, I think. Ah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, very good. Uh, I mean, your questions really made me think mm -hmm. about the story, you know. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that very much.